Well, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Kate Edwards. Kate Edwards, Edwards is the Executive Director of the Association of Canadian Publishers, the national voice of Canada's independent English language book publishers. Kate leads ACP's Government Relations and Advocacy Program and oversees the association's communications, professional development, and marketing initiatives. An active participant in industry initiatives, Kate sits on the boards of eBound Canada, Working Culture, and Canada FBM 2020, the organization that will present Canada's guest of honor at the 2020 Frankfurt Book Fair. Please join me in welcoming Kate Edwards. And thank you to BookNet for the invitation to share ACP's 2018 Canadian Book Publishing Diversity Baseline Survey, which is the longest name for a report ever. Um, and I'm really pleased to say that it was publicly released today. It's available on our website for download. So uh, this presentation will be short and sweet, um, a few of the key highlights, but I encourage everyone to uh, visit our website um, if you're interested in learning more. Uh, like many ACP projects, the study was a collective effort, and before I start, I do want to acknowledge the work of Amanda Crocker, Annie Gibson, Tanya Martin, and Wendy White Bear, who comprised the subcommittee that developed the survey and were with the project from start to finish. Um, I'm here today on behalf of them and the rest of ACP, but the project wouldn't have happened without them or... Uh, without the hard work of my colleagues at ACP, Jazz Cook, Madeline McCaffrey, and Emily Kellogg, who all played a role in bringing this together. So as background, this survey uh, was an initiative of ACP's Diversity and Inclusion Working Group, which was struck at our 2017 annual general meeting. Um, it was established at the direction of ACP's membership, which is, as Noah said, independent book publishers from right across the country. Uh, we have um, about 115 members in all regions of the country. And the intention of the group um, was to find solutions to the under-representation under of Indigenous people and racialized Canadians working in our industry. The first activity that the group decided to take on was this survey uh, with the goal of producing a snapshot of the industry's current demographic makeup. The survey ran last summer and was open to anyone who self-identified as working in Canadian publishing. Um, rather than cover the entire supply chain, uh, the subcommittee decided to focus on people who work for and with publishers to make books in Canada. So full-time, part-time, freelancers, contract staff, interns, volunteers. If you work with a publisher, uh, you are invited to respond. We distributed the survey to um, our membership and also other publishing associations, uh, also through Quill and Choir and through social media. Um, the survey was structured uh, to be anonymous to protect the privacy of respondents. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, we had a, a base survey and then an extra set of questions for heads of firm um, and asked them about their companies. Um, that data and information about that group's demographics is also pulled out separately in the report. All the questions were optional, and uh, some did allow for multiple responses, which I point out because you'll see that some of the responses have uh, responses that add up to more than 100%. So um, we are aware of that. In total, we had 372 responses, which we were quite pleased with. Um, for this first effort, uh, and that included 66 from heads of firm. The majority of respondents came from companies with fewer than 15 employees. So much of what I'm presenting reflects the reality for small companies. Uh, and we did have good representation from right across the country. The responses more or less mirror um, the activity of English language publishers across the country. The working group and, and really the, the membership, uh, the premise for which, on which the, the working group was established um, was that Indigenous people and racialized Canadians are underrepresented in the industry. And the survey responses validate this assumption, um, which you'll see in the next couple of slides, including the one that's up now. Um, this slide uh, measures um, respondents uh, answers to the question of what race they identify as. And we had 19 different possible responses to this question, which are along the horizontal axis. axis. Uh, the overwhelming response we received was white, which 82% of respondents, um, was how 82% of respondents identified. 
Uh, other categories were, were quite low, as you can see in comparison. Um, the second most common choice or, or response was East Asian at 5% and other at, at 4%. And this is the same question, but a, a breakout of heads of firms only. Um, the number of, of respondents identifying as white was similar, give or take, to the broader pool. It was 78% for this group. Um, in comparing the two, the two graphs, uh, my main takeaway beyond the obvious that um, white respondents are overrepresented in the, in the pool, but the level of diversity that we see in the broader all respondent group, um, while very modest, is, is greater than among heads of firm. Um, moving on to gender identity, 74% uh, of respondents identified as female and 18% as male. Uh, cisgender was selected by 50% of respondents, and remember, multiple responses were possible. Um, Non-binary was selected by 3%, and the remaining uh, gender identities, which were options, were, were selected by 1% of respondents or less. In the same category, when we break out uh, heads of firm, the number of female respondents remains quite high at 62%, uh, though the number of responses from those who identify as male increases to 30%. Um, this trend is consistent with other industry research that we've done and, and others have done, which demonstrates strong participation, female participation at all levels of the industry with slightly lower numbers um, at the heads of, of firm level. And um, I will note, compared to other cultural industries, uh, the numbers of, of women in management positions, it, it is quite high in, in comparison to, say, music or film. This table uh, reflects responses on the questions about sexual orientation. Um, heterosexual was the dominant response to this question among all respondents. The numbers were, were quite similar um, between all respondents and with heads of firms, uh, just over 70% for both. Uh, and we also asked respondents if they have a disability. Numbers were very close, um, almost identical for both heads of firms and the full respondent pool. 17% said yes, and about 80% said no. Um, so this chart is the full respondent group, and then this one is, is heads of firm. We did ask companies if, uh, or the heads of firm only, um, if they have an accessibility policy in place. And only 34% responded yes, which um, as many people know there are there is legislation that requires these policies, and this goes back to the morning session of, of the sort of spectrum of um, efforts around diversity and inclusion from compliance all the way to inclusion. And for me, this slide is a sign that more work needs to be done just at the, on the I keep moving back and forth. Compliance was on this side, um, on the compliance front in terms of education and other supports for, for companies to put those policies in place. So I've gone through that data really quickly, and there's a lot more in the report. But I, th I think the pieces that were most interesting for me and what I'd like to use the remaining time to summarize is some of the open-ended responses that we, we gathered. We asked all respondents to describe initiatives that are either in place now at their firms or initiatives that could be introduced to support greater diversity and inclusion in their workplaces. Uh, the report breaks these down in greater detail, but in the interest of time, I've summarized them together in groups. Um, there, there is quite a bit of repetition among the examples that came up, but again, um, I did really like the visual presented this morning of the spectrum from compliance to diversity to inclusion, and, and that comes up across when, when we look at the, the whole set of responses that came in. Um, some respondents are only beginning to consider this question um, and are more on the compliance side. And then others have been actively pursuing initiatives uh, which came through in their responses. So the first uh, bucket of responses were around policy and compliance. Uh, these are the basics and, and they frequently came up as initiatives that are already in place. Uh, some of those policies, um, it was noted they were, some were, were developed independently by companies, 
and others were the result of a, re a relationship with uh, another institution, like um, university presses, for example, might follow the policies of their parent institution. The next theme that came up was around recruitment and hiring practice. Uh, there were many notes about creating well-paid internship opportunities for diverse candidates, active recruitment, not just posting jobs in the regular places, but looking further afield, and also the suggestion to reevaluate job descriptions to attract a diversity of candidates. The issue of seniority came up uh, as well. Um, internships often are the, the first place that this discussion goes. But within the results, there was acknowledgement that hiring for those middle and senior management positions uh, must also be considered. Uh, mentorship and professional development uh, was another bucket of, of initiatives. Um, cooperative learning within publishing houses and also within industry associations to develop best practice. And some of that work went on today, and I know it will continue um, through BookNet, ACP, and other organizations. Outreach to and partnership with community organizations, educational institutions, and publishing schools were uh, other frequent responses that came to us, uh, along with the suggestion to increase outreach to kids of all ages um, and from different communities uh, to educate them about uh, opportunities and careers in publishing. And the survey, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, the survey was about the workforce and its demographics. We didn't ask uh, specifically about editorial mandates or diversity of authors or books being published, but those activities did come up in the open-ended responses, and they're important to highlight as well. So things like commitment to diversity and inclusion being reflected in the company mandate, calls for manuscripts from diverse communities, um, establishment of diverse editorial or publishing boards, uh, engagement with sensitivity readers, and the use of accessible facilities for readings, launches, and other events. Though uh, the report uh, largely talks about employees in the workforce, um, I raise these other points because they did come up often, especially among smaller companies who might not have a large staff, but feel it's important for them to um, take a holistic approach to this issue and um, have it move through everything the company does, the authors and freelancers they work with, how they make editorial decisions. And um, this came up a lot in the working groups discu uh, discussions as well. Uh, we did ask uh, heads of firms who didn't have plans to implement new initiatives um, around inclusion, whether there are resources that would encourage them to do so. And the responses um, here are variations on the same themes, uh, collaborative development of best practices, uh, dedicated funding supports, support for recruitment, training um, and professional development, especially specific to small organizations, uh, re-examining job requirements, and uh, again, ensuring office facilities are accessible. Uh, with respect to our working group's next steps, um, now that the report is released, uh, the working group hopes it will inspire discussion and action around this topic. Uh, the group continues to meet and is considering a variety of activities, uh, both to support companies at the firm level, but also to explore things that ACP could do as a collective, either within our association or with others. And uh, the subcommittee who developed the survey did intend it to be a baseline. Um, their recommendation back to the association is that it be repeated in three to five years' time. So. Uh, we hope we'll be able to revisit the topic um, and document how the industry continues to change.